Hey guys, Rockflamingo here and welcome to part one of my Guild Wars 2 Living World Season 2 walkthrough. So I did a walkthrough of the main personal story from start to finish and I did a recap of Season 1 as you uh, can't play that. So now it's time to crack on with Living World Season 2 which I'm going to play from start to finish an episode per mission. So we're doing Chapter 1 um, of the Living World Season 2, Disturbance in Brisbane Wildlands. It says, Heroic Flamingo. I'm well aware of just how busy you are, however you've heard the theories that Scarlet disturbed one of the dragons. I fear these theories have merit. My eyes and ears in Brisbane Wildlands are reporting mysterious incursions to previously quiet areas. Go see for yourself, I hope our curiosity will spur you to action. Okay, so we need to come here, um, as you can see, to the Brisbane Wildlands, uh, which is just north of Rattersum or The Grove, which are two of the main cities you can go from. Or you can come here through Kessex Hills, which is what I did, and just follow the path round until you get over here. Right over here. So it takes a little while to get to, but this is the objective. So this is a new area, and it, um, it's sort of, it's Living World Season 2, sort of an introduction to the Heart of Thorns expansion, a bit of a preview. So we're going to start to get into these areas. So can get some extra sleep. Listen here, Mother Hen. You can stop fussing. I'm fine. My ribs barely hurt anymore. <laughs> you ready? Let's join the others, shall we? I recommend that you watch my recap of Living World Season 1 because all of these characters were introduced in Living World Season 1, well, pretty much all of them. So they'll be um, familiar. So Casimir, Mead, there, and Marjorie Delacroix. And then we've got Rox, Bram, and Timey over here. Barely a peep from it. I got through those vines just fine. You worry about him too much. He's tough. I never said he wasn't. You thought it. What? Nothing. I want to talk to that Seraph and find out what's going on around here. Alright, so we're just talking to everyone. There's an optional objective we can catch up with all the allies so you can have a chat with them and there might be a little bit of extra dialogue. But we're going to go over here so we need to gather with your allies near Corporal Janssen. Excuse me, Corporal. Looks like you've got a problem on your hands. You might say so. We need to get through those vines, but they're impassable. How about we give you a hand? That'd be great. We're a small expeditionary squad. What are you doing so far from the reach? We're tracking black market traders that came this way. We suspect they may have a secret ingress past this mess. Well, let's see if we can help you clear a path. Your help would be greatly appreciated, ma'am. Delacroix, come over here. Delacroix, another Delacroix, obviously we've got, oh okay, yeah, let's, we've got Marjorie Delacroix, we've got Seraph and Belinda Delacroix, must be related. Yes sir, well, I'll be damned, hey sis. I thought maybe this was your squad. You're related? Yes sir, what are you doing here Margie? We heard a rumor there were strange goings on in this area, we came to investigate. As if taking on Scarlet wasn't enough excitement to last a lifetime. Let's talk. We've got some information about what's happening around here. Inquest. Time. We're under attack. Stay close, Jory. Defend the Northern Pass That's from the Inquest. Life. Okay. So these are like uh, Inquest, like bad Azura, aren't they? Which is pretty cool. You guys go All right. So bear with me. I I'm playing as the um, the warrior. Uh, in this playthrough, so I'm going to play as this character from start to finish of this season two. What I'm going to try and do is is play as a different um, profession for each of the storylines. So I played as the necromancer um, during the main personal story, and then when I hit level 80, I got the uh, reaper specialization, and that was really awesome. And um, all of the uh, future content and stuff like that, like uh, these living world and the expansions they're all level 80 content anyway so i'll probably have an elite spec for each of them and this is the warrior with the berserker elite spec uh, which is really cool i'm using um dual axes and a great sword which is normally my go-to when it comes to the warrior um, simply because i like to use a completely melee warrior because it just feels like classic and natural to me there's obviously some other options but you know i really enjoy it and I predominantly like to use, um, you know, physical skills and use my weapon skills mostly. 
so we've just got to uh, defend the eastern pass now so just make sure you um, keep an eye on your mini map and just go and kill the enemies where it's telling you to we've just got to hold off these inquest people a couple of veterans as well so be careful it shouldn't be too difficult I'm still getting used to this, like I said, this class. I've only just got the Berserker Elite spec, so I'm not um, fully up to date on it. Sometimes I might sort of forget to use it. Because, you know, you have to, um, rather than just building up your adrenaline bar and then just using your burst skill, you build it up and then you, uh, you use it and you can go into Berserker stance. Which is a bit annoying like this, because when you use it during a fight and then you're still in Berserker stance, there you go, for, for quite a long time afterwards. And then by the time you get to the next fight, you've probably run out. So you have got to time it, and that's something I've got to get used to. When you're in Berserker Stance, you can then use burst skills as well. Okay, some extra damage. But yeah, it does quite a lot of damage. Skills like that are a bit annoying, though, when the enemies are moving. This one's good, because you can move while you're using it. So all of these um, characters that we're playing with here, Tiny, Rox, Bran, Kazmir, Marjorie... They're all um, ones that, if you are re relatively new to the game, well, you don't have to be new to the game, not to have played Season 1, because it was back in 2013. Uh, but, you know, you may not know them yet, but you you'll get to know them on turns. They play a big part throughout the whole game and expansions, to be honest. So, um, these characters do stay in it. Um, especially that Tiny becomes, you know, one that you'll, you'll know quite a lot if you play them further. So, um, so that's pretty cool. So, they, they start to build up some characters at this point. Not that much carries over from the main personal story, I'd say. Um, the living worlds seem to carry on a bit more from each other and link in with the expansions, like this one does. But the actual personal story, the one that I, uh, I've played through already, done a, uh, done a walk through of, that um, is quite unique. And, you know, after that, they've obviously branched off in, with different characters and sort of a different story direction and everything like that, which is pretty cool. Obviously the when the game originally came out, we're talking twenty twelve is when they they did the original story. You know, they're, they're still obviously doing Living World and everything now. Um, and we're in twenty twenty one so that's nine years so there's gonna be quite a different artistic differences and all sorts of things like that. I am enjoying using this uh, this melee character though. I mean, it was really cool using the Necromancer, um, which was really powerful. And you know, I do quite often play as a Mesmer, which which I do like, and I generally use ranged uh, predominantly. But uh, you know, there's still that satisfaction of using, you know, being a melee character, especially one like this when you go in like Berserk mode and just smash the hell out of things. I mean, that's what it's all about, really, isn't it? A, little, a massive sword as well. Or a couple of um, axes. Pretty ideal. So we need to defend the Seraph workers building barricades in the eastern parts. So we're just sort of helping these guys out, sort of a brief you know, introduction. I think this mission's more of an introduction to the characters and the, the area. So the, uh, the the Brisbane Wildlands is sort of like um, getting into, you know, like the Magoon jungle and everything and. Um, that's where uh, we're going to be doing Heart of Thorns and everything. So, uh, They're oh, let's just watch this. In us. All right, <coughs> golems. Let's go back and fight them. Veteran experimental Mark One golem. Oh god, this is going to be quite difficult. First little test um, for us with this new character as well, which will be good. Uh, but yeah, I was saying at the end of um, Living World Season 1, you, you win back Lion's Arch from Scarlet Bride and everything, so that, that's good and everything, but her plan actually succeeds in that she uh, disrupts the ley lines and actually awakens an older dragon, it looks like, and that's obviously going to be explored more throughout this and getting into uh, Heart of Horn. So it's sort of, uh, I'll leave that and we'll sort of experience it as we go along, but. It's quite an interesting one, because obviously we, we fought an Elder Dragon um, in the main personal story, um, and it seems that we've got to come to another one. Okay. Little one. They died quite easily, but I'm taking quite a lot of damage. You've got to be careful with this big guy, I think. 
probably get used to this shit, but I like heal myself a little bit. What's pretty cool is my healing skill. As you can see there, it has a little heal, but like for a few seconds, a percentage of my damage inflicted comes back. Because I'm obviously dealing quite a lot of damage, you can use it to get a lot of your health back. If you like twin it with some of your uh, powerful abilities. That just gets really annoying, just keeps knocking me back doing that, and then as soon as he stops, you can attack him for a second, and then he yeah, does this. But you really got to time it with this. I mean, I suppose this is where you benefit from if you're using a ranged character. <laughs> so, being a fully melee character obviously has its drawbacks, but I'm sure we'll manage. Maybe it'll make it a little bit more interesting, because the main personal story when you're going through it was really easy to be honest, it wasn't really any time for stuff, so that would be a bit more interesting if we can uh, make it a bit more difficult. And, and the content does get more difficult uh, in this game to be fair. The expansions particularly, particularly Heart of Forms, does up the ante in terms of the combat, definitely makes it more difficult. Okay, so that big guy's dead, so where does that leave us? I think we just need to uh, wait for our um, guys to meet that up. Was exciting. It's been a while since I've seen you in action. You've improved. I've been getting lots of practice. <sighs> Looks like we've almost got those vines out of the way. You coming through with us? Yeah. We want to see what's on the other side. You don't mind, do you? If you come with us? Great gods, no. I don't get to spend enough time with you. Let's see if you still feel that way after a few days of being around us. Be a friendly sisterly banter there. Uh. Delacroix, I have a mission for you. I need you to run back to Fort Salma and give them an update. Oversee getting soldiers posted here to keep these vines back. I don't want our retreat cut off just in case. Yes, Corporal. Uh -huh. I'll grab my gear and go. I knew I could rely on you. Double time, Seraph. Yes, Corporal. Oh dear, so much for a sisterly reunion. It's not going to happen then. Anyone? It's okay. Some other time. I'm sorry I can't go with you. Promise you'll stop by Fort Salma on your way home and let me know how things went? I will. Send Mama word that you saw me, will you? So she worries a little less. Okay. I'd better get going. Take care of yourself, okay? Love you, sis. Always. You too. Belinda, it was good seeing you again. Oh, same here. Goodbye. All right, okay, so speak with Corporal Janssen to explore the new region. The inquest are brutal enemies. They have absolutely no conscience whatsoever. We're here to look into thieves working for the black market, but the inquest won't leave us alone. Unless this is a forward scouting group, maybe they're looking for a location to build a new one. These fools. If so, these vines don't make this area exactly hospitable. As far as I know, the land west of here has been cut off, more or less, for a long time. Criminals seem to have a few secret routes to get in and out. But who knows what goes on over there. It's as good a guess as any, don't you think? So, what's out there? Maguma Wastes. Other than that, who knows? The Orion flooding could have changed the entire landscape. I guess we'll find out. Let's explore beyond the ridge. Okay, so disturbance in Brisbane Wildlands completed. So that's the, the first part of chapter one of Living World season two. We've got a long um, journey ahead of us to get through all of the uh, Living World content, uh, but that's one down. And in the next episode, we'll obviously move on to the next one. So thanks for watching guys. Like and subscribe to be kept up to date and I will see you later.